Hey friends, this is Prokobis from EMP and today I will do my best to answer a question that pops up quite a lot. I get comments or emails from people that get confused by this, even though it's not really complex. And the reason for the confusion is that traditional books or guitar magazines, in an effort to simplify things, have presented the relationship between major and minor pentatonic scales inaccurately. Very often, for example, someone will show you this shape and say that this is the minor pentatonic, or they will show you this shape and say that this is the major pentatonic. Now, both of these statements are true, but if you leave it at that, they can also be very misleading. You see, both these shapes can actually be used as both minor and major pentatonics. That's because the major and minor pentatonic scales have the exact same structure. You can say that they are one and the same in terms of intervals and fingering shapes. If this sounds strange to you, then follow me for a few seconds and you will see what I mean. The only thing that changes between the two is what we consider to be the main note, sometimes called the tonic or the root. So for example, in the first shape, the red notes marked with a small m are the root notes for the minor version of the scale. Here's an example for A minor pentatonic. When I place this fingering shape starting on the fifth fret, the red notes are A's and therefore the root for A minor pentatonic. But the thing that makes them sound like the root notes is the background music. So for all this to make sense and not be just theory, I need to play this over an A minor chord background. Can you hear how the three A's sound like home bass? Now, what if the background chord changed to a C major? Do you think that the A's sound like the root note now? No, in fact, if you're not careful, they can even sound weird. But listen to this. What I just did was to land on the C's and the C's did sound like they are the root note because now this scale has become the C major pentatonic scale because of the background harmony. So we have seen that we have a pair of scales, the A minor pentatonic and the C major pentatonic that share the exact same notes. They are essentially the same scale, yet they sound different because of how they interact with the background harmony you can say that they are two modes of the same scale. Over an A minor chord, or a song that revolves around the A minor chord, it sounds like A minor. Over C major, or a song that revolves around C major, it sounds like C major pentatonic. And this is true in all keys and for all shapes. Pentatonics come in pairs. In classical theory, we call them relative scales. For every minor pentatonic, there is a relative major pentatonic and vice versa. So how do we apply this in a practical and musical way? As usual, my advice is to forget about box shapes and start thinking in terms of the string fragment system, or SFS. That's because SFS immediately gives you control over both versions of the scale in all fretboard areas. By the way, if you haven't watched any of my other SFS lessons, I have a link below for you to get the free SFS Fretboard Secrets mini course to get you started. It's very cool and I get very positive feedback from my viewers because in it you learn how to move freely around the guitar fretboard and break free from box shape memorization. So click below to get it completely free. You're going to experience some real fretboard freedom with this. But for those of you that already have an idea about how this works, let me give you the easiest way to get started with this. I'll do an example with just three string fragments because we don't have time to do everything in one video. Let's say, for example, that you want to play the E minor pentatonic everywhere on the fretboard. First of all, you need to know the location of the E's. You do know your E's, right? If you don't, then get the free fretboard memorization toolbox. I have a link for that below as well. It's completely free, so no cost means no excuse. Learn your notes. So, 
we get our three string fragments and place them everywhere using the first note on SF1. That's the root for minor. But what if you want to play E major? Well, locate your E's again, but this time use the top note of SF1. Most people play that with the pinky and voila, you have the E major pentatonic everywhere. Alright, I don't want to turn this into a full-blown SFS lesson, but you get the point. What we learned today allows us to easily switch between major and minor pentatonics and by employing SFS you can move easily around the fretboard and be creative with both of them. If you liked this lesson, I'd really appreciate it if you hit like and share. Also, please leave a comment to let me know what you think. And don't forget to download your freebies using the links below. Thanks for watching and remember, Enjoy your practice and be effective.